Let's do this. The Cult of Hockey podcast by the faithful and for the faithful. I'm David Staples of the Edmonton Journal, and I'm here today with Bruce McCurdy. Hey, Bruce. How you doing? Hey, David. How you doing tonight? Oh, a late night. I was coaching in St. Albert, and uh, so um, just watched, uh, you know, that really, the, I, I'll confess, I watched the highlights of the game, the scoring chances, so I'm going on that. <clears throat> so um, we'll, go, we'll do our... Um, We'll keep it short, Bruce, tonight. It's a late. It's late already, so we'll go with we two good things, two bad things, and two numbers in this podcast. Bruce, what is your good thing in the Edmonton Oilers' five-one loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs? What what is that? Their six loss in a row. Is that six? Six in a row. Whew. Six in a row. Wow. Yeah. Five to one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My good thing from this game is Warren Fogle. Uh, who the Oilers put on line with Connor McDavid for two periods. And I'll have a little quote on that, if you don't mind. But uh, for two periods, um, uh, I thought Fogel played hard. He took took the play to the net. He had uh, he had four good shots, uh, he had four shots on net. And I think three of them we deemed as him being the, the shooter of, a, uh, of an Oilers grade A uh, scoring chance. Uh, and... I just, I like he played with purpose and and uh, um, uh, he was really barging around out there and making things happen. <clears throat> that kind of stood out on the Edmonton Oilers uh, tonight, and that was his first chance to play with McDavid. And after two periods of that experiment, where that they were basically the ones, only ones that were making much happen for Edmonton. Uh, the coaching staff, minus Dave Tippett, who missed this game, is uh, he had to enter COVID protocol today. But they went to the standard boilerplate Oilers emergency plan after two periods. If we're trailing, well, no matter what else is going on in the, in the game, well, we have to put Drysaddle and McDavid back together and and uh, let them work out of it. And uh, uh, they did not work out of it with a fairly miserable third period. In the meantime, they split up the one thing that was working on the night, uh, Fogel with. Uh, McDavid to my eye and Fogel actually did make another great play in the third period to set up a, with a good pass from behind the net I think to Ryan is that the Ryan one anyway they had yeah uh, that was uh, right. was a good pass as well uh, I just didn't understand the rationale behind you know if you're going to mix things up mix things up but don't you know stick with something that might be working or at least give it a chance and it's just it's 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 almost gotten to mindless. Well, we're trailing. Well, we got to do this, and we have one plan, one plan, and we're losing. And that's we're going to put the big boys together and hope they can each get a hat trick and score our way out of this thing. Guess what? It ain't going to happen the way they're playing right now. There's no hat tricks in the future for the artists as a team, let alone any one player. <laughs> it's so frustrating right now. Holy moly! But oh. anyway, that 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 pissed me off. I have to say, just at the and I don't want to even single out by name the assistant coaches. I, I know it's just the team template, of, and they were just following yeah. what's done. And they had, a, I thought, a perfectly good and dangerous line with Fogel, McDavid, and and RV And nope. they might have been listening to Tip on the headphones. Like you know, we'd only he's he can watch the game um, if he's feeling okay. So who knows? Yeah, Fogel was. It's great, and it's great, Bruce, because the Oilers probably need yeah. um, a power forward that you can move in to that slot, and it ain't Zach Cassian. Nope. I think we it's safe to say. <laughs> so if it's Fogel, <clears throat> he's got some uh, potential there. I mean, he's he's a better player than Zach Cassian. Um, takes the puck harder to the net. He's more dependable with the puck. He wins more pucks on the forecheck. He's a somewhat better defensive hawk. He's a better defensive winger than than Cassian, and he's and he's big and tough. So put that in your pocket is something that might work in the future. Work going forward as a as a look for the Oilers as they, you know, they're not going to lose every game the rest of this year. This is obviously no. a bad bad spell. It just seems like it. <clears throat> yeah, man, this is just. Um, I've managed to keep fairly optimistic uh, through this, Bruce, until tonight. Mm-hmm. And it's starting to like, what the, like, this yeah. is foobar. And, yeah. um, 
Good luck digging yourself out of this. Fortunately, they have a slightly less difficult game against Columbus um, coming up on Thursday. Maybe, maybe less difficult. We'll see. Columbus will be coming to town mad uh, after blowing a 3 nothing lead in Vancouver tonight and losing in the 60th minute after a cheap penalty that had them all raging at the ref and then Vancouver scored the game winner in regulation on the power play. Pretty brutal way to lose. So they'll, they'll have a... Uh, uh, a bee in their bonnet or a burr in their saddle or a burr in their bonnet, however it works anyway. You know, uh, that's that's Thursday's problem. Uh, tonight, to me, there's, you know, there was 3 nothing in the third period. That's the time you maybe you should want to experiment or continue experiments that, that are already underway as opposed to go back to the old plan B. Mm-hmm. I, I made that point already. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, my good thing, Bruce... Um, Colton Sevier's goal his mm-hmm. first as an oiler he's you know the Oilers obviously have some <clears throat> problems with, with their depth which wasn't helped with Ryan McLeod out on COVID protocol um, mm-hmm. McLeod hasn't been playing great um, that said it's not like he's been the answer at all 3C is obviously a big hole with the Oilers but Colton Sevier has been part of the answer for this team he's kind of taken on the chase on role of that val- valuable fourth line guy who can help out on special teams, which he he generally does on the PK. He hustles, he's smart, he's a very good defensive hockey player. He is an excellent defensive hockey player. I like wingers, you know, when they get around 30, you can really cover things off um, defensively. And, you know, some, some who can't when they're around 30, <coughs> Zach Cassian, <coughs> um, really bother me, Bruce. Like Cassian's oh, defensive play at his age is just inexcusable, honestly. Anyway, um, Sevier is, uh, getting it done and he can help this team win. He's, um, you know, I don't know how, what, what they're going to do with the rest of the fourth line to get this going in the third line. Uh, I don't know if Benson's part of the solution or not. I'm still, I guess if you have to answer the, ask the question, maybe there's a question mark there. Um, I don't know if Archibald, if there's any chance he's coming back at all. He he will be a welcome ad- addition at this point if he can get healthy and get inoculated. Um, anyway, Colton Sevier's been playing well. Good for him scoring a goal. It was an interesting play where Tyson Berry kind of stretch lobbed the pass. Oh, it was a very yeah. crafty pass where that Barry made there up the ice to get set this set this off, and Sevier gobbled it in and up in the offensive end there, and then Cassian kind of bowled in and put it off someone's skate over to Sevier for a wide open net and he he put it in so good goal that was quite the pinball by Cassian he fired a hard backhand pass to his right and it went exactly the opposite way to the guy in the skate and it bounced over to Sevier and even the immortal Jack Campbell was unable to react to that one and uh, Sevier stuffed it home I, I'm, I swear they've already they've already ordained Jack Campbell as the uh, Greatest goalie of our generation, but he is good. He had a good game, don't get me wrong. But uh, anyway, uh, Sevier, that's his first goal as an oiler and a uh, long time coming and welcome development. Uh, see anybody a little bit further down the lineup do anything on the offensive front. That's the first goal by a bottom sixer in nine games. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, uh, I'm almost getting the impression that uh, the big boys are getting a little discouraged. And they they're going to need a lift from below because so I'm sure it feels to them some nights that they're carrying basically the whole team, and it sure looks that way some nights. And and uh, uh, somehow this team's going to have to generate a little bit more more uh, uh, support from the support players. And Colton Sevier is definitely one of those. Yeah, or even Nugent Hopkins, or you know. Um... <laughs> Anyway, yeah, Nuge has been disappointing me lately. The whole team has. I mean, Nurse has been struggling since he came back. Keith had a pretty rancid game tonight. All right, bad things, Bruce. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm going to go exactly in that direction. There's a few choices tonight, but uh, I am going to single out Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who I thought had a poor game. Uh, he did make a good pass to Leon in the first period, and Leon missed the open net. And that was, I think, the exact moment that I knew that the Oilers were doomed to lose another game. Mm-hmm. They had this 
you couldn't ask for a better chance to take the lead for the first time in six games. And top, top scorer in the league. Yeah. The league misses the whole net. And Nuge did make a good pass there, but it was a rare good play uh, from him on this night. Uh, he played uh, 21 and a half minutes uh, with no shots, four giveaways, including a brutal one on the last Toronto goal, which, I mean, it was meaningless, I suppose, by that point. But he, uh, there was a pass to him along the boards, and if he just got out of the way, the puck was out of the zone, but he, he stopped it. And then rather than make a play up the boards, he tried to go through the middle, like two feet inside the blue line, didn't get it out. Toronto turned it around and Austin Matthews rifled it home with a great shot just to sort of add a little sting, more sting to a uh, evening that uh, stung a lot. And uh, he, I just, he just didn't really seem to have it, you know, 25% on the face off dot. And there just was, there was nothing, um, nothing creative. Uh, coming from his stick, and and you know you, you single him out here. We could we could do a few bad things, and each one could be a different player that had a tough game. Yeah, uh, but uh, <clears> I, <throat> I, I'm going to go with uh, that particular player, and he's a personal favorite of mine. It's not like I'm trying to wa- want to single him out, but I do expect more. Yeah, and that's two games in a row. I think I picked him last game or the game before. <clears throat> All right, like like any and, and as you say, Bruce, like. You could pick Nurse on the the first goal, like oh. tipping the puck on net and then kind of screwing himself into the ice. Or I I thought Turris on the second goal was like he loses a battle in the neutral zone and then he's slow on the back check, and um, I didn't like that one at all. And then <clears throat> there's there's um you know Duncan Keith allowing a pass right through the slot on the fourth goal, and then um, Nuge on the the fifth goal and also Keith, you know he. His once you once you pass the puck up the boards, your job is to join the play, not kind of saunter into the play. And because he sauntered when there was a turnover, there was a huge gap, and he wasn't able to close it in time to stop the shot. So I, I do think that the veteran D man has got to be more intense in a situation like that. But um, I'm so I've listed a number of bad things, but I really think the bad like one of the bad things with the Oilers is they are, they are definitely getting some bad puck luck. And I don't know if this is, you know, the old cliche gripping the stick too tight, but there was like, you know, you're mentioning the dry saddle play where he misses it. And, you know, there was, um, Leon had a, had a great shot, wide open shot right at the end of the second. I believe that was power play. He's set up there in the slot and he can't, he can't score that. He can't score that one. Yeah. I can't stop that. He got that on net, but he he couldn't score. Right. Like it's mm-hmm. a wide open look mm-hmm. at the net. Leon, dry, you know, so it's not yeah. just that though. Fogel had a McDavid set up Fogel in the slot and a, just a great scoring chance early in the second period. Fogel couldn't score. Um, then then um, Yam- Yamamoto wins a battle behind the net and Fogel sets up Ryan in the slot. You know, these are, you know, we're, we've just mentioned four shots mm-hmm. that probably, you know, you, you probably are going to get one or two goals out of um you know they're they're probably 40 percent shots and two goals would not be surprising out of that but they didn't get any out of those four instances and Sevier's was a great moment of puck luck so they got some luck there right but this has been the story of the Oilers too they've been getting like against the Hurricanes they got lots of great scoring chances Unbel- you know I think I counted five uh, five alarm chances for the Oilers that night, and then that doesn't include Hyman when he missed the net. <clears throat> so they're getting all these incredible chances, but man, they are not going in right now. It is brutal puck luck that the Oilers are experiencing. So the puck uh, luck, or the back. fact the other team's getting saves. I mean, well, we're seeing we're seeing top notch <laughs> NHL goaltending, and we're seeing it every night. Every team that's rolled in here. Has 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 had strong goaltending, yeah. And sure. maybe maybe we should be expecting a few more saves at the Edmonton end of the ice. Well, we should. Part of it is puck luck, though, Bruce. Part of mm-hmm. it is like the yeah, Sevier goal comes because of puck luck. So some of it is just that. It's just you know, just things aren't going your way. 
and this happens in games and you can end up losing them. So that's my bad thing. Your number. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go with, uh, uh, I'm going to go with number <laughs> 20. And it's the cheat number because I get to count it twice. Uh, one is that uh, Derek Ryan was a plus player tonight for the first time in 20 games, plus one. Uh huh. So that breaks along and, and, uh, 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 and hopefully in a good way. He's actually, I think his game squared around this last couple of games and he hasn't been a problem. I know he's not producing anything, but at least he's not bleeding the goals like he was for a while there. But more importantly, 20 giveaways by the Oilers tonight. 20 giveaways. Uh, four major culprits, three of them on the blue line. Now, Cody Cece had three. Darnell Nurse had three. Evan Bouchard had four. And I already mentioned Ryan Nugent Hopkins with four. And that's just not taking care of the puck. And, you know, it's, 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 uh, that's a large number of giveaways in a game. And, and, uh, uh, I just thought they could have done a whole lot better managing the puck than they did. And that's, you know, that's one number that actually tries to, tries to uh, account for that. But uh, that the general observation was that uh, Edmonton gave up the puck too easily, too often. Uh, Even though, you know, the, the uh, shot shares and all that tell you Edmonton had the puck for uh, a, a large amount of the time. Uh, but uh, some of those uh, some of those mistakes led to uh, led to serious problems. And, you know, Nurse tipping the puck on his own net. I don't think that was scored a giveaway, but it was just not a very good play. With you know, the puck came to him and yeah, he tipped it on the net, and then he had to say screwed himself into the ice trying to find the rebound, take himself <coughs> out of the play. It was just a play where you know the puck should have been in a safe spot, and it wasn't. I mean, that's also bad puck luck, right? Like it, it, um, he, he doesn't get his whole stick on it and it just has this weird deflection. And then, then there's a weird rebound and, and he, you know, it doesn't bounce to him the right way. And he, and he ends up flailing away, trying to, to hit it. So these things happen in hockey and. Or McDavid bam. deflecting one into his yeah, own net. Exactly. Hey, there you go, Bruce. And like he hasn't uh, scored a goal in the other team's net for, uh, uh, five games now. Yeah, and he's, you know, I mean, and he gets a stick on one and puts it right in the top corner of his own net. I mean, that's that's bad luck. Um, my number, Bruce, is ten to nine. That's the great eight chances the Oilers had more than the Leafs, and and this is consistent in the losing streak, the six game losing streak. So it was ten to nine for the Oilers tonight. According to our account in the in this losing streak, it's been about 12 grade A shots for the Oilers per game and 10 for the opposition. So the Oilers um, have not been getting goaltending. They their goaltending really has kind of uh, fallen apart significantly in this uh, in this ride, and it's something that we all feared happening if Smith ever went out, and it's now happened. Koskinen struggling and. Uh, um, Skinner had a weak game. I think he he only played the one. Uh, uh, he he played two games in two. there. He lost the first game against Seattle in Seattle. Yeah, four three game. Yeah, uh, and then uh, which one of the home games against Boston? The one where they were tied late in the third period, and then uh, Grelchik scored the the slapper oh, late. God, yeah. And that, he, he was okay in that game, like I, you know. But they've given up 24 goals in six games. That's not going to get her done. No, they've been dramatically outscored, and um, uh, just despite the grade A shots being um, in their favor slightly, so it's it's a bit mystifying. Like if you if you want to be a complete optimist, you'll just cling to that and say, well, you know, they're not playing that bad. They'll they'll find a way out of this. And there's maybe something to that, but goaltending is a huge part of this game. And there's just no doubt the other teams are getting some great goaltending. They've run into a, a string of hot goaltenders, very good goaltenders, and the Oilers have no one, no one in net to match that right now. So the bet on Mike Smith, which worked out pretty wonderfully last season, mm-hmm. um, is blowing, absolutely blowing up in the Oilers' face right now, it's fair to say. And um, this is this is the risk you take when you sign a goalie. You know, 
that age. I was, I, you know, if he was healthy, there was a really good chance. I think that Smith would have played, had a really, had a good, another really good season. Um, but it's hard to stay healthy when you're that age as a goalie in the NHL. That's why there's so few of them that age. So few players, period. Like the, the game grinds you down. And <clears throat> Sounds so like what we're close. Yeah, and Rose, he's come on, one guy. Fun. He's one guy. Well, they're talking about him actually playing next game, maybe. Oh, okay, there you go. And and I do think I I did see <clears> this <throat> last year. He came in in Ottawa when the Oilers were struggling, and and right from the moment he took the net, the team was different. Yeah, uh, his puck handling and his his uh, uh, his just his general swagger. I think. It's something the team sorely needs right now. Like that's the kind of leadership I think they do need because this is a team that's confidence is way way low right now. I mean, they, all the shots of them on the bench tonight, and they looked like they'd rather be on the moon than playing that game. He is an electrifying presence, and uh, he really is. He's such a charismatic mm-hmm. hockey player, Mike Smith, and his passing of the puck is changes the way the Oilers play hockey. So I think. If he can come back and be himself, you know, maybe we just look at back at this as an aberration. You know, Smith was out and it finally caught up to them and he came back and they got good again. You know, could happen. Um, fingers crossed. I guess that's what we're hoping for here, eh, Bruce? I mean, you know. Uh, well, I think they were unlucky that he was out the entire time that they were trying to break in all these young defensemen at the same time. They could have used that. Uh, that uh, yeah. Yeah. That puck management behind those D men in in those games, but most of the defensemen are back now, right? Only uh, uh, only uh, Russell and Cuckoo are out now. I mean, the top five defensemen, the obvious top five defensemen, all played tonight, and they still yeah. have the five goals. And there's no saying that Nima Lyon wouldn't play ahead of Russell and Cuckoo. Oh, no, that's right. Like he's close to number six, but it's not like you got a youngster <laughs> in every pair. So, yeah. Alrighty, let's wrap it up there, Bruce. It's a late night, so thanks for thanks for talking tonight. All right, thanks for listening, everyone. And in the meantime, and in between times, this has been another edition of the Cult of Hockey podcast. Mm-hmm.